let's kick off tonight. We'll talk about Saul, the name that just keeps becoming more and more complicated and more and more relevant, yet less relevant as the days go by. So, what do we know? Well, I have been delving deep into the situation of Barcelona. As you know, I've reached out to my friend in Spain, but I've also been reading as much information as I can around everything going on right now. And it seems that Antoine Griezmann is not a very happy dude because Antoine Griezmann apparently wasn't consulted over this whole potential swap deal between Barcelona and Atleti over. So, well, first of all, it was Saul and Griezmann, and, and then it was Griezmann and João Felix at one point, and apparently that was quickly batted away. And they are desperately, desperately, desperately trying to free up a load of money. If you're a big English club now, be it Liverpool, be it Arsenal, United, Chelsea, whoever you are, and you fancy any of those Barca players... Well, now is the time to go and put your foot on their throat because they are struggling and these players can be gotten. So I'd love Liverpool to test the resolve about Pedri, um, but I don't see it happening. But the Saul stuff is very intriguing because you're hearing at one point that he fancies a move to England from some sources. Other people are saying that we're very close. Other people are saying we haven't made any contact. I don't know what the situation is, but as somebody who obviously has been watching Barcelona my entire life. I'm both appalled and intrigued to see what goes on and how this situation resolves. Does Real Madrid want Salah? Right, let's get straight to that one. You've asked the question. I've got uh, some information, so let's get to that one. Right, so there's a report out today that said, will it be Saul? Will it be Sanchez? Will it be somebody else that we haven't spoken about? Will it be Neuhaus? Will it be Gravenberch? It's very intriguing and what I'm pretty confident about as an outside observer is that we won't see any of this resolved until we get an attacker in. Because attacker has to be the priority with the AFCON coming up. Now, again, I say that and I sound hypocritical because in one breath I'm going to say you don't sign a player just to cover for a few weeks. But in the other breath I'm going to say, well, we probably need a player. So... Yes, it's it's great that we don't get one because we will miss players for two or three games of the league season when they go to the AFCON. But, you know, you don't sign players for three, four years on the strength of, of a month. So there is that to keep in mind as well. So, yeah, loads to get through tonight. Real have been fluttering their eyelashes at Kylian Mbappe. Look, we all know about that one. It's, it's no secret that they want Kylian Mbappe. Uh, but reportedly could look at a move to Salah as a backup plan if PSG refused to let their prize asset walk this summer. They go on to talk about his goal-scoring record. Uh, but then the key part for this is the last line. However, there have been rumours of discontent from Salah's camp over the past few months, heightening speculation he could near the Anfield exit. Now, look, as somebody who's been around football as an observer, as a fan for a long time, and, you know, reads this media stuff every single day of the week, that comes across in one or two ways to me. I've always laid out my fear around Mohamed Salah if we don't tie him down to a new deal quickly, that there will be people that will come in and test our resolve to hold on to him. And two years left on a player like Mohamed Salah's contract might sound a lot, but it very quickly becomes 18 months and then he's into his final year and we're in a Mbappe situation. So um, the sooner the better we hear positive news on Mohamed Salah's contract talks with Liverpool. Great, because until then, the, he's there. He's there and available to be tapped up, for want of a better phrase, because he's always struck me as somebody who wants to feel the love. And no doubt he feels it from the fans. Of course he does. We love Mohamed Salah and we want him to sign a new deal. But there are other clubs. Now, where the hell Real Madrid get the money from? That's another conversation because Florentino Perez don't te does tend to live in a parallel universe to the rest of us at times. I thought that it was PSG we needed to worry about because, you know, if they lose Mbappe, it's no secret that they, they look at Salah as somebody who could come in and do a job and somebody who is, you know, ready to come in and help them win a Champions League. So for us, I just hope and hope and hope that Michael Edwards, that Jurgen Klopp, that everybody associated with the club are showing Mo the love and making them feel like we want them and get them tied down to that new deal because the last thing we need to do is get to the end of this transfer window. Klopp all thinks he's built his squad and then all of a sudden we have a Coutinho moment all over again where, you know, we thought he was going to be happy, but then boom. Now, I'm not saying Mo will do that. He strike, strikes me as a very honourable man and every action that he's had at the club has always put, put, been put across that way and he seems like somebody who who enjoys his time here. But, you know, as somebody who likes to feel the love myself, I do understand that side of it as well. So I'm very worried around Mohamed Salah. And But I would ask how the hell Real Madrid are going to pay for him because, you know, they, they've got their own financial headache as well. 
Hussam Awar, the latest one to be yet again linked to Liverpool. And this one comes from a very reliable person, to be honest, because anybody who watches uh, the BT Gold Show or anybody who you know knows Julian Laurent, you'll know he's very, very much well known in French football. He's a very high-level journalist, somebody who I would hold in very high regard. And he said that Liverpool are interested in Hussam Awar and could make an offer soon. That makes me quite happy. Because I like Hussam Awar. We, we've always we've had conversations for years about Hussam Awar. Arsenal made a move from before. Um, but what we do know is we have a nickname for Jean-Michel Aulas on this channel. I don't really want to say it because I don't want to get streamed to get demonetized. But let's call him Johnny. See you next Thursday, locks is what we used to call him on the channel. Um, because he's a very, very difficult negotiator. But it looks like Hussam Awar has looked around and seen Memphis Depay leaving and seen other players leave, and he wants him a move. And to be fair, he probably deserves a move. So what would you guys feel about Hussam Awar coming to Liverpool? I mean, bit of a wild card, mainly plays uh, as a central mid or in an attacking mid, has come off the left-hand side a few times as well for Leon. Could we see him maybe play in the hole behind the front three? It would be interesting. Thing. Now, wouldn't be in my eyes a Gini Wijnaldum straight for straight replacement, but would definitely provide creativity. Would definitely provide some some ability for whipping in crosses and set pieces. And uh, somebody who look, I'd be very happy with him. I won't lie, I won't beat around the bush. If we'd signed Husamoar, I'd be happy. Uh, Renato Sanchez or, or, or Awar? Well, look, I'll be honest with you. The Awar the Awar link excites me a lot more because. You know, what we seen of Gini Wijnaldum at Liverpool was a very disciplined, a very well-versed, a very well-educated, a very energetic, bulletproof player. But the Gini Wijnaldum you've seen for the Netherlands was basically a number 10 who was getting into the box, making third-man runs, um, helping score and supply goals. So you could see how all all around Gini Wijnaldum would appeal to a lot of, a lot of clubs because he can be used in a whole host of positions. I like the idea of OR because... I like the idea of somebody who can play between the lines, somebody who can link up play, somebody who can find a little bit of space, somebody who has a bit of magic at their feet. And um, that excites me a lot more than any of the other names. Um, look, it isn't... It's it's a lot easier to look at Genie leaving and go, Saul, Renato, Sanchez. I mean, yes, very more similar players. But Hussein Moir is one that would get me up off my seat a little bit more, get me a little bit more excited about the prospect of banging in a few more goals. So, yeah, I'd happily have Hussam uh, I don't know about you guys. Give me a thumbs up if you would take Hussam Awar or give me a thumbs down with the player you'd rather. Talking about Grujic, that leads me into Sassuolo and, of course, Berardi, who Sassuolo look at Grujic as a potential replacement for Locatelli, I think it is. Is it Locatelli who may move on from there? Um, and look, that's great for us. If you've got multiple clubs wanting to sign your player, you know, hopefully in an ideal world, that should drive Gruwich's price up a little bit. But do I think that Liverpool are really interested in Berardi? It's always struck me as no. But, you know, I have been wrong before and I will be wrong again. But I just see this as easy links. And this one says Liverpool remain interested in Sassuolo winger Domenico Berardi, who would be available for around 40 to 50 million euro. Although the Serie A club want Marco Gruic, could leave a swap deal on the cards. And surprise, surprise, that comes from Sassuolo News. So, yeah, I mean, often at times these, I think, are just put out there to try and... Um, get the vibes going, you know, put the cards in another club's favour. So, you know, Grewich will move, definitely, but i just never seen the, the Berardi links as being ones that would be genuine.